Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on React. Now in case you're unfamiliar with React, this is a front-end web framework that is used to build user interfaces. It is powered by JavaScript and I actually believe that this was created and is currently maintained by Facebook and the entire library to my knowledge is open source. Now React is just a super popular and really good thing to know now in 2021. It allows you to kind of make more advanced websites and to go beyond really simple user interfaces and make user interfaces that have a lot of logic behind them. Now just bear with me for this short introduction here. I'm just going to talk about some prerequisites kind of for this tutorial series and what you can expect to learn by the end of it. So as I said, React is powered by JavaScript, so it's going to be a really good idea to have some JavaScript knowledge before going through this. I'm not going to be explaining any super basic syntax like functions, if statements, anything like that. I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with JavaScript and you've used it before. With that said, if you don't, I do have a tutorial series on JavaScript. I will leave a link to that in the description. Now, throughout these next videos, there's probably going to be about 15 of them. I'm going to show you all of the core and important concepts of React. So that's going to include stuff like components and JSX, props, styling, state. I'm going to show you about events, forms, how we can display data. I'm going to talk to you about setting up a very basic JSON server talk about hooks, use effect, fetch, HTTP, React router, reducers, all of that kind of stuff, really the core aspects of React. Now, if you don't know what any of that stuff means, don't worry. Obviously, I will explain it in depth and I'm going to try to keep these videos relatively short and kind of just pack in one topic in each video. Now, throughout this series, we'll be actually building a project to learn all of this. The project we're going to be working on is an inventory management system. This is going to be pretty straightforward, but we're going to be able to add items to the inventory, search items in the inventory, and then obviously display those items on the screen and kind of look at details related to them. All right. So with that said, let's get into the first video here. What I'm going to show you how to do is set up our programming environment, download our editors, download Node.js and all of those things that we need. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to our web browser and we need to install the following Visual Studio Code, Node.js and then the React Developer Tools. This is a Chrome extension. I believe there's an extension for Firefox as well, but I'm going to be using Chrome for this video. So if you want to follow along exactly, then download Chrome and download React Developer Tools. Now, all three of these links here will be in the description. Start with VS Code, then download Node.js. You can just run through the kind of default installation and then obviously install the React Developer Tools in Chrome. All right, so once you have all of those installed, what you're going to do is open up Visual Studio Code. This is an IDE, and this is what we're going to be using to write our uh, React code. Now, you don't need to use VS Code. But this is going to make our life a lot easier. You're going to see here that there's a lot of files that's involved in creating a React application. And while using something like VS Code will just make stuff a lot simpler, it has really good autocomplete, and it's good to kind of get used to using an IDE, especially when you're working with a large framework like React. Regardless, the first thing we're going to do here is install an extension. So open up Visual Studio Code. Mine's in full screen mode. Yours might look like this. Uh, to put it in full screen mode, you press F11 if you are on Windows. Then press here on this extensions tab, kind of the uh, little grid with that box hanging out. What you're going to do is search for React. And you should see that there's this ES7 React slash Redux slash GraphQL, whatever. Uh, snippets. What you're going to do is install that. And then this will give you a bunch of auto completion and just kind of cool features related to React so that we'll have a better experience here in Visual Studio Code. Once we've done that, what we're going to do is open up a folder or create a new folder in VS Code. And this is where we'll kind of start our project. So what you can do is uh, you can go to the Files tab here in VS Code and press Open Folder, or you can press File and then Open Folder. You can go to wherever you want to open the folder for. So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this react tutorial and I'm just going to put working because I have another folder called react tutorial where I have some kind of template code just for myself and regardless I'm going to open up react tutorial. Awesome. So now you can see that it says react tutorial. We're now in this kind of project directory we could call it and what we're going to do is open up the terminal in Visual Studio Code. So to do that just kind of drag up from the bottom here you should see a terminal pops up and then we're going to type in the following command uh, to actually start and create kind of a template react project. So once you've installed Node.js, you should be able to run the command npx. Uh, when you run that, you should get some type of output. If for some reason that's not working, then probably reinstall Node.js because that should work for you. Now, if npx is working and hopefully it is, what you're going to do is type npx and then create 
hyphen react hyphen app and then you're going to put the name of your app so in this case our app is going to be an inventory uh, management system so i'm just going to say inventory will be the name of our react app so again npx create react app and then inventory and notice here that i'm in the directory where i want to create this folder so i'm in my react tutorial and when you open the uh the terminal in vs code by default it's going to put you into the directory that you have open so anyways i'm going to press enter here and this command is going to take a minute or two to run it's just going to install a ton of stuff and give us kind of some template code so once this is done i will be right back so we will continue in one second but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series which is algo expert algo expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews they have over 155 coding interview questions on the platform which are taught by great instructors including myself get started with algo expert today by clicking the link in the description and using the code tech with tim for a discount on the platform all right, so the command has just finished running. You can see here there was a ton of output in the terminal. A bunch of stuff was being installed. And now we're getting this kind of nice, uh, I don't know, output here that's saying success created inventory at and then the location inside the directory. You can run several commands, yarn start, yarn build, yarn test and yarn eject. Now you can read through these if you would like, but obviously I'll discuss them myself uh, as we kind of go through this. So if you look now inside of your folder, you should see that you have a ton of files inside of this inventory folder. So you have node modules, public, SRC, and then you have a few files here. Now, I'm not really going to discuss all of these right now. In the next video, I'll go through what all of these files are and what ones you can change and delete and kind of how everything works. But for now, I want to show you how we can actually run our kind of development server and start seeing our sample React app. So just to clarify here, the command that we typed in, this creates kind of the starting React app for us. It does all of this really annoying setup. Yes, you can set up a React app manually if you would like to, but running this command just saves you honestly probably about half an hour uh, if you were trying to look up and find how, find how to do this for the first time. Regardless, what we're going to do now is CD into our inventory folder. And now that we're in our inventory folder in our command prompt, uh, what we're going to do is type yarn and then start. Now, Yarn is just kind of a package manager. It's very similar to NPM. And when you do this, what it's going to do is run a script that by default is kind of set up and installed when you run that command, and it will load your development server for you. Now, you should see that it opens in your default web browser, localhost colon 3000. This is the address of the location of your kind of development server where all of our React stuff is going to be rendered and shown. And right now you can see it says edit src slash app.js and save to reload. And then there's kind of a spinning little React logo here. And this is what the starting code will do for you. It just creates this kind of very simple web page here. So you can go here now and it says you have uh, you can now view inventory in the browser. You can go to localhost colon 3000 or what you can do is go to the IP address of your machine colon 3000. This is just running on your local area network. So if you were to go to your phone or something and type in this command, uh, you'd actually see the, the same application. Great. OK, so now let's just quickly make a change so I can show you kind of how this works. So I'm going to put this on the side of my screen. Let me move this a bit smaller. I'm going to go into SRC app.js and let me just kind of move this down here. I just want to make a quick change to this paragraph tag and show you that this file right here is kind of what's being rendered on the screen. So again, if you went to inventory src app.js, now we're just going to change this p tag and say my website is running exclamation point. I'm going to save this file. When I save this file, it will automatically reload the website. And you can see it says my website is running. If we go back to the terminal, it should give us some output here saying that it kind of reloaded this. Um, let's look here. OK, I guess it's not going to tell us anything. That's fine. But regardless, this is kind of like a hot reload. Uh, we didn't have to manually reload the server. It just automatically determined there was a change to the file and well, it updated it for us. OK, so that's pretty much all I needed to show you to actually set up your kind of environment and start getting coding. The next thing I'm going to show you here is the React developer tools. I'll just kind of really quickly go through these and then we'll look at them more in depth when we actually start writing some code. So obviously I have my React application open here on localhost colon 3000. That's the port. I believe you can change that, but by default, this should be what yours is running on. But what you can do now is right click if you're on Chrome here, press inspect, and then you're going to see that it brings up this kind of console. So what you can do is actually go to these little arrows here and you should see something that says components and profile. This is if you have the uh, React developer tools Chrome extension installed and it's active. 
So what you're going to do now is press on components. What you can see is we have this one component called app. This probably doesn't mean anything to you right now if you're just getting started with React, but this is kind of a place that we can go to look at and inspect our React code. And this will make a lot more sense once we actually have something interesting to look at. I uh, also note there's something called a profiler. This is actually what we can do to kind of measure or sorry, what we can use to kind of measure the performance of our React code. Anyways, I just wanted to show you those two tabs there and how you kind of access uh, the React Developer Tools pane from uh, Google Chrome. All right, so actually with that, I'm going to leave the video here. In the next video, I'm going to go through this entire project structure so it was automatically generated for us, discuss what all of these files mean, talk about kind of how things are set up and how React actually works. And then from there, we'll go on and actually start writing some React code uh, and learn more about this. As I said at the beginning, I'm trying to keep these videos relatively short. Anyways, hopefully you guys are excited. Again, please do leave a comment letting me know what you want to see in this series. I'm not yet filmed all these videos when this is going to be released. With that said, I will see you in the next React tutorial.